Okay, so here's the plan. I am going to move this corn head out of the way. Then I'm going to take the 8330 and mow this entire grassy knoll to make it really clean. And then we are gonna use these red stands, hook those onto the boom. Then I will fold out the boom on the sprayer set it down in this location. It kind of makes, if you could imagine a V right here. So we'll set that down there. And then I will grab the destroyer from the other building, bring the sprayer to the shop, bring the destroyer to the shop and put them together. Oh, and then also we will use the forklift and get the Gandhi air seeder off the shelf and hook that on. Are we gonna make it? We're gonna get all that done by today. Stay tuned to find out. Give you guys a little bit better view. the feed truck out. Now, this is one of my favorite parts. I love destroying. We got, let me catch you up to speed. Didn't film everything. Got it mowed, got the boom off, got the destroyer out of the shed, hooked that up, hoses are on. We got turnips and radishes and all the hydraulics work. The destroyer is ready to go. So first thing in the morning, we can destroy, but we need to do the edges of the mail room. Um, the 16 male rows that we put around all the seed fields first. And that's when we get to use this, the 5830. This is my, one of my favorite all time trackers. I love the chopper, I love choppers. Um, this is a fantastic, amazing machine, as long as it works and it works most of the time. We haven't done a whole lot of maintenance since the last time I parked it, so we will check the oil and i mean this thing i already know it will it'll fire right up and we're just going to go try to chop one load and see how everything works get work the bugs out and then early first thing in the morning we should be able to chop and broccoli
we encountered a slight plug here. This is a low spot, so weeds are growing, as you can see, some grasses. So if he was just chopping the corn stalks, it would be going a lot better, but the grasses are super wet, and of course we just got a rain. So I think it's a little plugged right now. I mean, look at the mud. Ooh. Just kind of got chunked up. Something else here. Grass is on the way. I'm hoping I'll stab myself with a corn stalk. <laughs> Yay! Oh my goodness! We plugged. I guess I could have just told you that. Yeah, we're plugged. You guys. Can you smell that Delicious. through the screen? Fresh. Yeah, I've been here before. So what I gotta do is reach up and you wanna wait until that thing stops clicking. Make sure all your moving parts are done moving before you stick your hand anywhere precarious. Um, you guys don't have a crowbar. Do you I a don't. Shovel, spade. No. I maybe have a trowel. How do you feel about a trowel? I think I need reachability. Um, be the... Ethan, give the toolbox a look. In front of the tractor. Getting in the dirty isn't that bad. And plus, it just finished a tough mutter. So, prepared. There we go, Mr. Green this. Thumb. All right, let's fire this baby up, see if it works. Stand clear, folks. Neutral. Good morning day number two of chopping destroying we actually did not destroy last night we um but i did chop a load we'll go get that but we need to fuel up the 8530 with hold on a second cord is twisted there we go with uh red juice there we go. Any guesses on how much fuel this tank, it was on empty last night, how much fuel uh, will it hold? Doors open, let's get to it. 
79 degrees this morning, or a high of 79 today. It's just gorgeous, beautiful, calm. Great day in the state of Nebraska. And now we will check the oil. Never forget to check the oil. It's important. Let's see here on the line. Okay, the uh, fullness looks good. Hmm. The uh, oil is good, I can confirm. I would like to change this oil, probably at some point. All right, diesel is done. We ended up with 118 gallons. So uh, $590 for a fill. Not bad at all, not bad at all. I have arrived at the field. I'm gonna have a short chat with you guys here real quick. I love sharing my life with what I do, work, and some personal stuff on the internet. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and I think you guys appreciate it, and um, I, I, I love you guys, and I enjoy entertaining you. With that said, um, this is a working farm that I'm on, and I have a personal and private life as well too. So it's very important that you guys respect the boundaries. I think you should respect the boundaries of everybody that's you know, putting their lives out there, including Laura, Laura Farms as well too. Please do not show up to my farm. Do not show up to my house. Do not show up to Laura and Grant's house as well too. We lead very busy lives and we don't know strangers from the internet. You guys might think you know us really well, but it makes it very difficult, makes life very difficult um, if we have random strangers showing up. So please, please do not. If you want to meet us in person, farm shows, ag shows, or anything we post, like, hey, we will be here at a meet and greet, that type of thing. That is the best place to interact with us. Um, but otherwise, please respect our, our privacy as well, too. All right. Without further ado, I'm at the field. I'm ready to chop my first line. I'm super excited. Come along for the ride. This is a uh, six row chopper. Let me give you a little bit of explanation on what we're doing in this, uh, what I'm, what I'm asking. This is a seed corn field. I have 16 rows 
of males right here and those are done pollinating and protecting the main field the reason we do 16 borders here is so that the pollen from that corn crop which is different does not contaminate the females over here so we'll have 16 male borders here and then one male every four rows all the way across the field and those will just destroy out but along here we are cattle feed uh not everybody does it it's fairly rare but this is one of the ways we can participate in sustainable agriculture kind of a buzzword but we're already sustainable but we're just trying to do a better job every year and here comes my wagon i'll give him a thumbs up i didn't radio contact to him so i'll have him unhook this wagon right here and then um, i'll hook it up and chop down and then they'll get the other one okay kale tell us what happened well i um there's a pivot tire track here as you can see that kind of spreads out a rut and that's where my drive tire fell into and so it gets stuck and kind of muddy but fortunately all i have to do is unhook it and i can drive right out and uh laura or ethan they can pull this wagon out pretty easily with the 85 30 four-wheel drive traction should be fine so you can see some of that ooey gooey that squished out i was doing pretty good keep in mind we still have had uh two two and a half inches of rain only just a couple days ago there you can see there's the pivot track where it comes in we're right about the halfway point of the field and sometimes water sits in the bottom of these tracks and so it's just really saturated and slick i had a full wagon so there it is but good looking corn and once again it's a great day in the state of nebraska Let's see what that corn looks like that's good cow chow All right, everybody, we are facing a crossroads, a fork in the road. I need your opinion. What should I do in this situation? I'm not stuck, but that is a pretty good mud pit. Do I back out, wait for reinforcements, or send it? What would you do in this situation? Yeah, you don't have to follow my channel very long and you know exactly what I'm gonna do. Okay, quick update. Greased the chopper, filled fluids up, checked fluids. I got that foot jack stand thingy. I just slammed a bolt in there because it kept going down and dragging. Got this all greased, everything else looks good. Took some mud cloths off. Tightened uh, the slack in one of the chains. So now we're good to go. Let's get rid of that chunk of mud and we will get back at her.